welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element six, meanders. Silence for the register, please. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Meanders are turns or bends in the river. They're a result of both erosion and deposition processes. So let's have a look at where we'd find them. Well, on my long profile, you can kind of see some examples here already. So we can see a bend in the river here, and here. Well, meanders are the result of lateral erosion, so to the sides. And we tend to find lateral erosion in the lower courses of the river as opposed to the upper course. So we do find it in both the middle and the lower. However, we tend to find them less frequently and in smaller terms in the middle and more frequently in larger in the lower course. So if I show you an example of this. So in the middle course, the channel is quite small anyway, but we've only got a couple of meanders and they're quite small, these loops. Whereas when we get to the lower course, as you can see, these are large sweeping loops and there's a lot more of them occurring. This can come to complete extremes as well. If you've got a significantly larger river, it's got more power, more energy. So this is the Amazon here. And you can see this picture's actually been taken from space. So these are huge sweeping loops of meanders, which are in effect, in some cases, a couple of hundred kilometers in length. So let's have a look at how they actually form. Well, meanders can be split into two different elements. So we've got an outside bend and an inside bend. The outside bend is where all the erosion is going to happen. And on my diagram, that's in the pink. And erosion happens here because the outside bend always has the fastest flow of water. So it's always got the most energy. And it's always got the most energy because it's easier for water to travel at high speeds on the outside bend because there's a greater distance to make that bend, that turn. Whereas on the inside bend, in order to get around this turn, you've got to slow down to actually make it. So the outside bend has the most energy. As the water collides with the river um, channel, the edge of the channel, Hydraulic action and abrasion start to create an undercut, which eventually erodes away this land here in what's called the meander neck, which is the land between the two river channels. And that purple line here represents where that fastest flow occurs. So it changes from one side to the other as the river turns, because the outside bend changes as the river loops round. As discussed, the inside bend has the slowest flow. As it's taken this bend, it's going to have to slow down, which means it's losing energy, which means it has to drop what it's carrying. So here we get deposition, and that's represented as the sandy color in the diagrams. So on the inside bend, new land has been created. On the outside bend, land has been lost. So the channel doesn't get any wider, it doesn't get any narrower. What it does mean though is the channel migrates, that means it moves. So if land has been made here and lost here, it means the river channel is going to start moving in this direction. On this side, it's going to start moving in this direction. And at the top, it's going to start moving in that direction. So let's have a look at what this actually results in. Well, as you can see, the meander now has a very narrow neck. There's almost no land between the two. At the top, the meander is starting to get longer as it starts to move more towards the north of this diagram. It's still depositing, it's still eroding, but we're starting to lose land in the middle. And this eventually results in those two meeting. So the neck has completely disappeared now, and the main river channel has now become straight because it's completely cut out the loop of the meander. And the reason why that happens is water takes the, the easiest, less resistant course on its path. So it's easier, it expends less energy to move in a straight line than it would be to move around this meander and do that. Water that does make it around the bend, it's an inside bend, so it's going to lose energy. It's going to deposit loads of material right on the opening to the meander. And over time, that will then block the course of the water getting into the meander. So this will no longer collect any new water, and this is called an oxbow lake. 
Now, in our course for Educast, you don't need to understand an oxbow lake, but it does help you understand the formation of a, of a meander, which is why I've included it. Now, you can actually see this on our original diagram of the Amazon. So we've got our big meander loops, but we've also got oxbow lakes, and they're a different colour because they've got no fresh water coming into them. If you look even further out, you can even see examples of, uh, of oxbow lakes that have completely dried up and been taken back up by the rainforest. And there are hundreds of these when you look all over the place. All these little scars are actually oxbow lakes from past meanders. Let's have a look to finish off today at the cross section. So we've got a meander and our cross section goes from A to B along this bend. So A is our inside bend and you can see it's actually very shallow because that's where all that deposition is occurring. So it's depositing new uh, material every single time. And this is called a slip off slope, a point bar or a river beach. All three keywords are acceptable. On the opposite side, it's incredibly deep and that's because that's where our erosion is occurring. But also the river channel is quite straight because the river is constantly eroding, eroding the side of that bank. And that's called a river cliff or an undercut. The blue in the middle represents the area of fastest flow the highest amount of energy. Well, that brings our lesson to an end, but continue at your own pace by completing the Now Try It task for homework, class dismissed.